Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke saying hi. Uh, this little story is about the saga that we're having with the DX720 R series uh, Dell Power Edge chassis. My one of my big babies. I love to death, and I decided to splurge and get her a Dell baseline motherboard. But it looks like this problem that I am seeing is more significant than I thought. So here's a recap. So the DX720 is back out of the um, rack. It's over here on my system environment here set up. And I've got it hooked up and I've removed the Dell LSI controller, suspecting that it was causing some of my headaches. I was wrong and that's okay. That's what basic troubleshooting is. Just to get the gist of how this unit is acting up. And so at that point in stage, I decided, okay, that being the case, let's take it apart put it back together and it did post it finally did post but the end result is this as you can see there it immediately reports that I have a bad configuration I have no present discs but no matter how much typing I do to press any key this unit is totally locked and there is no num lock there is no key response no tap the system is completely frozen once it tries to run the diagnostic loop on the internal RAID controller. So what does that mean? It means uh, this little guy right here is in trouble. So this is my onboard RAID configuration card. When I pull it out and I expose it for what it is and where you can see it, it is a simple retractable release right there and right there. You can pull the unit out and uh, we are definitely having a problem and it's kind of warm so that uh, is making me suspect what's going on here now that can be one of two problems one it could be that little guy right there if you look very carefully you'll see that key is notched and if it is then it doesn't matter what I put in this unit uh, I run the risk of um, pretty much frying anything I have in there so that's one real serious risk. Now I'm going to put this guy back in again and I'm going to attempt to boot it up and see if it will pass the post diag. Now let me give you a reference point on this. Now this is the old motherboard and if you look at the board you can clearly see pin alignments are accurate. They're right on target. But when you look at the other unit you can see pin distortions. One there about roughly about the seventh or ten seventh or eighth pin from the far right and also there are a couple out of alignment right there as well so I'm going to be probably asking for a replacement motherboard because I don't believe that's actually my controller card the controller card is not making proper contact and so with that being the case my chassis is no good so that's troubleshooting for you always go for the basics always go right down to the initial point of where you're putting stuff in because when you put this in it's supposed to key and go right in boom it went right in with no problems whatsoever and it snaps in but when I take a look at the other motherboard and here is my placement I want to take the unit and I'm getting resistance from the actual unit itself. It's not seating quite right and it's not angling correctly. So it's causing a potential point of conflict. But I can eventually get in, but I can already tell that it's not going in correctly. So it's not this unit, it's this bracketing assembly here and those two pinouts that I see here. Now, I could try to fix that, but do I really want to? I mean, you can see it very clearly that it's it's just a one single pin that stuck out. And it's probably also adding resistance to this edge card to go in, and it's not completing probably the voltage load cycle or something like that. So I'm going to send an RMA request to give me another motherboard and send this, this one back. I like this motherboard. Fast, efficient not having the variances in the cooling effect uh, it's a good board but it just has a problem so now I know what caused the problem and so now I can fix the problem 
because I don't want to just run on detached storage when I have 24 drives here and two in the back why not use them right the other thing I'm gonna do while I'm doing that testing is I'm gonna try to get this bad boy to to post and boot off of a SSD drive I really want to try to get that to work because I'm finding out all over the place that it can be done and um, everything I'm using is Primo standard, so it should work, but it definitely is having problems working with the configuration in such a way so that it just won't do what I want it to do. And so if I can get, you know, one of these cards in there just for grins, right, I'd like to, and get it to post and get it to work, that would make my day. But I think the problem that's happening here is the PCI bus selector state for this motherboard is limited unlike a lot of other motherboards where I can go in and really tweak out the PCIe uh, bus and how it's interacting I, I just I'm gonna try to get this to work I could also use this little guy right down there which is a dual SSD controller booter or I could use this extender controller booter or I could go down here and plug in a USB interface right down here and run off of a USB stick if I wanted to, but I don't. I want to use performance on a performance system. So we'll see what happens and I'll let, keep you guys appraised of what happens next. The key important thing here is to understand that when you're going to take an old chassis, right, and you periodically update from point to point to point, um, do what I did. Just add the components as is. Try not to add anything new except for one item. And that's exactly what I did. I added one SSD drive to it. And I knew if there was any variance change, it would only be from the one device that I put on there. And it flagged and I took it out. And it still had some other issues I could reverse engineer to identify the problem by extracting the components to find out which ones were working and which ones weren't. So I absolutely recommend. I mean, this cost me 100 bucks. That's cheap. And I absolutely recommend that, you know, get low-end servers, or not a low-end, I should say cheap, once high-end servers that are now low-cost servers. Get them in here. Get the gear that goes with it. You know, tweak it out. Add 89 gigs of RAM if you want, you know. Uh, take advantage of that. Stress it. Test it. Put new things in. You won't be disappointed. You'll find yourself in a pretty good place with this set up because uh, most servers only get used 10% of their functionality in their life, but they're highly stable. So now you, the guy who comes around the second round, jump in and you decide, okay, I'm going to take this the other 50%, you know, get it to use to 60%. And then you start seeing your hardware work for you. And you realize you only need a little bit of hardware if you know how to maximize the hardware itself. So this is Brad Dyke signing off. This is a short little video, just kind of keeping the, uh, the history of this wonderful event <laughs> uh, chronicalized so that you guys can enjoy it as um, I'm working with this. I'm gonna continue to play with the SSD side. If I figure out a way to brute force it, I will, and I'll let you know what I did. Uh, everybody, have a great weekend. Take care, God bless.